this tree here is American elder. It's very similar to the European elder, except that it spreads out as a thicket. You can see how it's spreading out from the base. Um, it'll grow to about two to three meters high, so it's perfect for at the top of the field. And uh, yeah, we're just going to plant that up. It's growing in one of these root trainers. They're not cheap, but they are very good. Uh, so I'm going to have to lay it down to get it out of the pot because you can't really lift them while they're in the pots. They're a bit flimsy and they tend to crack. And with the cost of them, I'm not risking that. So we'll take that out now. So I've got to get the pot off it first. So I'll unscrew these. Because you can't just pull it straight out like a shaped pot because all these little divots mean that it just won't pull out. So I'll put them safely away and then that looks good. That's amazing. And you can see what it's done there. So I'll peel the bottom off. <laughs> so there we go. Instead of the roots coming down and then circling round and round and round, as soon as it goes into the ground, if you do that, as the roots develop, they choke out the tree and they tend to not live very long. Whereas this, you can see, they're all good to go and that's just ready to explode outwards as soon as it goes into the ground. See, some of it's come off, but it's a very aggressive tree. Really pleased with it, very happy. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get the wheelbarrow to move that. So the American is gonna go here because it'll only grow up to two to three meters and about two to three meters wide. So downhill, because south, south is behind the camera, that way is north. We don't want anything too big up here that in winter is going to create a huge amount of shade for the house. Because by the time this is finished, finished doing its thicketing out, it's uh, it, you know it's still going to be quite a bit of standing wood. Now this side of it, that pot there is an autumn olive. That the other side of that will be a couple of dwarf fruit trees eventually. The autumn olive is a nitrogen fixer, so that'll supply nitrogen to the trees and also to this American elder. And this is a beautiful tree. Um, it, very, very, very strong, very aggressive growing. Um, and, and it's because it's self sterile, um, it won't produce um, uh, elder berries like a European elder will when it's fertilized, like that one there, which is a European elder. Uh, if it's denied uh, pollen, and it flowers at a different time to the European elder, so it can't cross pollinate. So we'll just keep putting out flowers all summer long. So we can get three months at least of elder flowers from this. So as it spreads out, we can take cuttings off it. Um, I mean, this was, we got this as a plant about that big in the spring. It was put into the root trainer eventually, it was very badly neglected, and it just blew up. And it's an amazing tree. So I'm gonna dig a hole here, we're gonna plant that. Then we're going to plant the autumn olive with a view to that supplying the nitrogen for this whole little copse of planting that's going in here eventually. This is just the first stage of it. So that's that planted. I've made the mound around it. Um, this roots very readily. So these side shoots here, come spring, uh, late spring, will come through, we'll remove the soil and we'll probably better take them off with secateurs with a certain amount of root on. And this will give us five or six other trees that we can then spread around. And yeah, by next year, we'll have probably five or six trees that look like this. Done. This is a Japanese quince. Um, it is a fruiting bush, well, fruiting tree, but it doesn't um, have like an eating kind of fruit. It's quite, um, quite an acidic, lemony kind of flavor. It's a very hard fruit. The reason we're growing it is first of all, it's a really pretty bush. It um, only grows to you know, two meters-ish, so lower than the pods. It's deciduous, but will drop its leaves in winter. So again, we haven't got the problem of having a big plant at the top here that's casting a huge amount of shade to uh, block the winter sun from reaching the house because the house is going to have a solar retrofit for uh, solar gain. So it's uh, a really nice uh, fruit that you can drop into water in a blender and make a really nice lemon drink. And I like that. So we've got quite a few varieties that are lemon substitutes just for drinks. Now, 
it's going to spread a good size. You know, it, it's a fair size bush when it's full height uh, and spread. And just uphill a bit, we'd have two dwarf fruit trees here. Behind that is the autumn olive that we just planted. So even though we haven't got these in yet, we're planning for them and we've come this way a little ways. So this is going to go in here. Uh, yeah, we've got a few of these to go in. So that's that in. Um, I've got a weed suppression membrane and I've just put some wood chip on it. It's been sitting around for about a year. So it's just started to break down a little bit. Um, it will have uh, comfrey planted as root cuttings around it. So that'll come up next year. Comfrey seems to do really well at the top of the field. Uh, and that'll act as a rhizome barrier and keep the grasses away. And we can come around uh, twice a year once it's established and we can side that and just use that to top dress and fertilize the, uh, well, all of the trees up here. It's the day after the last bit of filming. So that's the Japanese quince that went in yesterday. And around the corner here, I've put another one in. You can see here, there's dwarf fruit trees, there's three. So I've got the other Japanese quince in here as the fourth one. So that's this section complete, at least in the main plantings. Still got understory things to go in, but that's the bulk of it. And just below them, it's a tiny autumn olive. That's the uh, nitrogen fixer for the next few fruit trees that are going to go around this area. So we've just started to extend down. And then up around the corner here, here was an incomplete set here. So there's the autumn olive in the centre. That's done quite well. That's put on about six, seven inches this year. You can see we've got three dwarf fruit trees and the fourth has just gone in here. And that's another Japanese quince. So all of these will come up and they'll fill the space quite nicely between the two pods, give a huge amount of shade, a huge amount of shelter, uh, not shade, a huge amount of shelter um, for this whole top system and the, the swales beyond with their plantings will have a lot of shelter effect as well. But they're all quite low, they're all lower than the, than the, uh, the pod height. So we're not creating a huge amount of shade for down the house and the greenhouses where they're going to go. These Italian alder were put in about two years ago at about a foot high, bare root trees, and now they've put a good five feet on. Most of them are taller than me, but we've had a few failures. Now, what's interesting about all of the alders is, let me show you here. This is one that we dug up in the bottom field. Because they're cheaper to buy in batches, all the ones that didn't go into this row got put in at the bottom field just as a sort of holding action so we could use them later. You can see, see the little nodule there? That's nitrogen fixation bacteria in a symbiotic relationship with the tree. And that's what makes these alders such fast growers is they fix atmospheric nitrogen out of the air that's around the roots and they form a symbiotic relationship with Frankia bacteria down here in the roots. Very cool trick. And that's what that is there. There's a little nodule of nitrogen. So we're going to get these in the ground before they dry out. Very cool. So today I'm planting out the monkey puzzles. They've been in the root trainers here for just over a year. Uh, really it's a bit overkill for a plant that size a root trainer this size so we're gonna plant them out anyway it's just here as a sort of holding action before I was ready to plant them out but I quite fancy using the root trainer pots because they're not cheap you know they're expensive things I want to use them for different use for bigger trees that have a more aggressive root so that's good it hasn't outgrown it so let's have a little look we just tease <laughs> tease some of that off there we go uh, that's fine there we go ow, 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 ow. so that's the root ball so we've got <laughs> there's another chunk of it so all in all they're doing really well but they should transplant quite nicely all right, let's get another couple of them dug up. 
We're also planting out this uh, black elder. We've already got the one because they take so readily from cuttings that we're just going to divide it up as time goes on. Uh, it's hard to walk about a year, just over a year in this root trainer. So this is going down into the bottom section as well. So yeah. pop it on its side to see what the roots have done. Wow, look at that, that's amazing. So we're gonna lose <laughs> some roots anyway. You know, with things that root that aggressively. Especially with it being on the plastic and the water gathers, the roots tend to work the way down. But uh, we haven't done that usual circling trick that causes, you know, major problems for trees. So this, I think is gonna come more or less in that root ball. Just pull some of the uh, Put the cup out. There we go. That's really nice. So I'll put that in the wheelbarrow as well. So that's the black elder in its hole. Now that is northwest. The bottom fence is northeast. Now we're putting the bigger trees like chestnuts and the monkey puzzles along the northeast edge of the property rather than the northwest because there's a phone cable above here. So these are all trees that we're putting in here that will become full height trees or multi-stem shrubs but you know <laughs> a bit like this one but they're things that we can pollard we can coppice and they'll come back they're not going to get you know completely hammered just by being cut down every 10 20 years we've got um hazel as well near it see here here's hazel there's another few dotted all the way down there's going to be chestnut between them as well because again that's a good nut confusing variety that we can uh come through and we can pollard and coppice them and take poles we can take wood um, and they will come back you lose nuts for a few years but you know it's not going to be any shortage we got tons of them so that's where this is going so I'm just going to backfill this we'll tamp it down I'm not going to worry too much about rodent collars on this we haven't got to worry about deer pressure here we don't really have them although they do nearby um, so hopefully that continues uh, but we don't have to worry too much about rodent population because it's fairly toxic to humans uh, the wood isn't particularly good tasting. We don't seem to have, well, we haven't lost any elder to rodent pressure, so I'm assuming the same is going to be true of this. So, yeah, we'll see how that does. So, this is the first spot that I'm going to put the monkey puzzle in. As we've already put understory plants in next, uh, last year and the year before, we've got juniper here. That's one of very few survivors, and that's a really happy understory shrub. That'll do very well in partial shade. And we've got Morello on a dwarf root stock here, which actually put fruit on this year. It was his first year in the ground. I probably would have plucked the fruit off if I'd known, because it can slow them down, but it seems to have done really well anyway. So that's a very happy tree. So I'm gonna put the monkey puzzle in here between the two of them as an overstory. There'll also be chestnut put further between here and the fence. And the other two monkey puzzles are gonna go out that way. I can see there's another Morello there. It'll be just the other side of that. There's other understory trees to come through as well. And eventually below that, there'll be um, poultry will be ranged through here. So yeah, it'll, it'll do well. The, uh, the grass is a fairly temporary thing. As the chickens are through here regularly, they'll start shredding that down and taking that up. And we'll also be putting in um, a very aggressive uh, ground creeping form of comfrey that we're growing out just uphill here. That'll take over form an understory that we can come through and we can slide a couple of times a year. Uh, it works very well as an animal fodder and we can take it as well just for transferring that fertility elsewhere that we need it. But these don't have particularly big root balls. So I'm going to dig out a square. Apparently trees prefer a square hole because it stops the roots from circling. Which I suppose is never going to happen anyway, it'll be in heavy clay like this. So, that's that dug. Right, break that up a little bit, give it a hand. There we go. That's about perfect. That's on its original grade. and keep the turf off 
because if I put the turf back in the hole, that um, grass is just going to come straight through. So that will do for that. Get some of the soil, and it was already in because it's fallen off the root ball. Heal that in a bit. And we shouldn't have to worry too much about rodent pressure once it's up to a decent level because you can't pick them up with your bare hands. They're that aggressive. So, very spiny plant. That'll do. So, I just put the third one in the ground um, along the northeastern edge here. We've already put in a lot of conifers. So that's a nice, what is that? It's a pine, we've got a spruce here. There's a whole row of them. And these are in just to create an initial windbreak um, for the pioneer species. But just inside that is where we started doing the plantings that we want to keep in. So when they get cold out, these will stay behind. So that's the third one that's just gone in. Happy little tree. So I'm gonna put a mulch collar on. And then we're going to surround that with um, a wood chip that's been in with the ducks. So it's uh, wood chip and duck manure all mixed in together. Now, these trees here, we've had for two years. Yeah, two years we've had these. It's just starting to branch out into a multi-headed crown. And they're very, very beautiful trees when they get bigger, very decorative. But they also have a uh, edible nut, one of the best eating nuts apparently that you can get your hands on. I've never eaten them, most people haven't. Um, but with this particular species, as uh, the Chilean pine, uh, the monkey puzzle, you need um, a male and a female in order to get nuts. They're not self up. Uh, they do have separate genders. And the difficulty is, you can't tell what you've got until they actually start producing, which is in 30 to 40 years. So, <laughs> we've had them probably, yeah, we've had them two years. They were a couple of years old then. So these are roughly five-year-old trees. By the time it's like 15 years, it'll be a decent sized tree. They're fairly small, they're fairly slow growing. Um, but conceivably, I could still be alive to see nuts on some of these, maybe if we've got females uh, and males. But uh, we'll put more in as time goes by. But these are just the three initial ones that we've put in. So, yeah, quite pleased with them. We're going to mark them with a cane after I've got the mulch on, just so that we can, you know, we're not going to lose them because in summer the undergrowth will come up here. So we'll have to come through and uh, we'll chop and drop around a little bit with, you know, get the grasses down so that it keeps a, a decent amount of, um, uh, you know, a decent amount of sun exposure. And they should do quite well with most of them being tucked in, in amongst these tussocks of grasses, just to give a little bit of protection. Because as the wind howls across, you know, 40, 50 miles an hour, um, anything that's up reasonably high is going to get blown sideways. Um, whereas if you got even cover like this, it makes a huge amount of difference. If I was to come down here when it's, you know, middle of winter and really howling, if you tuck in behind something like this, it makes a huge amount of difference. You can halve the wind speed that easily. So, yeah, hopefully they'll do well. And uh, we might get some food in a few decades. <laughs>